Good afternoon, everyone. And I'll wait until we are ready for live stream. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Tuesday, January 25th regular council meeting. For those that are joining us uh, live stream, welcome to you. I'm going to call us to order at one o'clock. We have an agenda in front of us. Mr. Coleman, do we have any additions or deletions? No additions or deletions from administration, Madam Chair. Thank you very much. <laughs> Councillor Belazer will move as presented. All in favor? That is unanimous. On to the minutes of January 11th, 2022. Looking for someone to move those. Councillor Wanchuk. Questions? All in favor? Unanimous. Uh, we also have an opportunity at the beginning of every meeting for anybody from the public who'd like to address count, County Council on a matter that is not on the agenda can do so now. I am not seeing anyone come forward. So we will move on to staff introductions. And is this you, Chief? Oh, uh, if you could turn the mic on there. Yeah. That early. Madam Mayor and Council, it's my pleasure as we uh, introduce a bit of history into Ladue County. Uh, into County uh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you our new full-time day shift crew operating out of temporary station nine here. Uh, these five fine gentlemen, after an exhaustive recruitment process, were the successful candidates and started working January 4th. Uh, after nine days of corporate and fire service onboarding, they went into service last week, early last week. And so uh, I'd like to introduce Julian Boudoir, our platoon chief, uh, formerly from Lac St. Anne, 16 Ooh. years of former service. Uh, no order, Steve Penner from Parkland, uh, uh, with 12 years of previous service. Colton Anger, formerly from the New Sarepta station, with 10 years of service. Brandon uh, Richards Fedor from Kalmar with 14 years of service, and Adam Nee, who used to be with NISCU and has not moved that far from where he's working now, with 13 years of service. So, uh, welcome all, and uh, we'll come over and take some photos. Nope, so just, out of this. just you. <laughs> I had mine the other day. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that sounds rehearsed, but that's okay. <laughs> Better to rehearse than not. Thanks, guys. Get back to work. All right. Good news start to the meeting. And with that, we're moving on to <clears throat> news that's maybe not so good, which is motor graders. Is Mr. Broadbent here? might be late or he might be just waiting out there so we're not crowded. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Yeah. 
Okay, well, let's move down to uh, 5B1. I know that we have, well, at least we, well, we don't have those. Can we do 5B2? We do have 5B1, okay, come on forward. I didn't see Amro. <coughs> oh, Chelsea's. All right, 5B1, partial road closure and land sale resolution. Plan 549R at all. Whenever you're ready, sir and ma'am. Good afternoon, council. Um, at their November 8th, 2021 meeting, the Public Works Committee passed a resolution to commence the process for the closure of a portion of the undeveloped road plan 549R within plan 202-2430, block one, lot eight, which is approximately one mile south of Township Road 504, adjacent to the west side of Range Road 222. As the requested land is within a road plan 549R, the closure can be completed via a council resolution and does not require advertising. The adjacent landowners were notified and no concerns were raised. Um, administration has referred the potential closure of the undeveloped road plan to the various utility companies. Apex, Plains, Midstream and Enbridge all require utility agreements. At this time, the right-of-way agreements are outstanding for Plains and Enbridge. However, this does not impact the decision to close the road plan because the uh, package for AT will include these documents when we submit it. Alberta Environment and Parks has advised they have no objection with the road closure and the Minister of Infrastructure and Transportation will need to approve the closure resolution prior to closing the road and selling the property. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. Any questions on the report for administration? We did have a chance to look at this uh, microphone, please, Mr. Our Councillor Smith. Thank you. I see in your report there's a couple of outstanding um, use agreements. With one uh, is that going to? I noticed you said it's not going to impact it. I'm just wondering the potential for it to go south, or if you see any complications from trying to renew that in agreement with those companies. I don't foresee any um, complications. I have been in contact with those companies, and they're just waiting for survey documents. So I don't foresee any complications. Go ahead. It's interesting that they've surveyed that to death and they're waiting on survey documents, but okay, thank you for that answer. <laughs> okay, any other questions for administration? Councillor Vandenberg? Uh, this type of closure doesn't have any adverse or risk effects to the county? Uh, through the chair, no, it does not. Okay. Thank you. Looking for a mover of the recommendation or a new recommendation, Councillor Smith? Yes, I'll move the recommendation uh, that we, I believe, close and sell. And I just want to make a comment. When you look at, uh, if you've had a chance to go over the aerial view, I know this area well. That is, uh, again, Enbridge pipeline that runs through there and several others. It's the most pristine wildlife covered area that you could ever get into. So I know the neighbors and locals do use the um, these cut lines quite a bit. So to do this, we'll just keep local people in the area. Thank you. So the recommendation uh, via the report is that council authorize the partial road closure of a portion of road plan 549R within plan 202-2430 block one lot eight. Seeing no further comments or questions, all in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And um, we'll continue with you, Mr. Mariglot. Absolutely. Kelsey will leave you. <laughs> um, on the August 26th Public Works Committee meeting, a uh, letter from the Minister of Transportation was presented to the Public Works Committee. This was regarding the intersections of Highway 2 Glen Park Road, as well as Highway 795 Glen Park Road. Um, the intersections at these locations have been identified by Ladue County as being a safety concern in the letter that the Chair of Public Works Committee sent to the Minister is requesting that a safety assessment be conducted at both locations. On January 10th, we did receive a response where it indicates that the Minister of Transportation has asked the department staff to conduct evaluations on both locations. From the presentation of Public Works Committee, it was also thought that a letter of thanks for the response be drafted for the mayor's signature. So the second attachment is a draft letter for consideration. 
Thank you. Councillor Lewis, your chair of public works, would you like to comment on uh, where the letter came from and why it's important? Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so we, we sent this request in that they, that the province assess uh, Highway 2A and Glen Park Road. As we know, it's one of our major transportation corridors within the county. Uh, very, very busy, very um, potential for, for hazards. So we've asked them to uh, assess, assess this intersection and the roads and see what they can do on their end to help us make it safe for all our travelers. Uh, so happy to see that a letter has come back acknowledging our request and uh, look forward to, to the outcome. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Smith. <coughs> Looking at the draft letter, the letter from the minister was to the chair of public works. I'd like to see the letter sent back acknowledging from the chair and CC to the to the mayor because the letter did come to Kelly Lynn Lewis, chair of PWC. The, so the acknowledgement in case we have to ask our chair to, to work on this on this file, I'd like to see her name there. Just a thought. I'd like to see the letter again from the chair of public works and CC to the mayor instead of the way it's prepared. Thank you, Councillor Vandenberg. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, one was that I noticed that Councillor Smith had pointed out, um, but I would wonder if uh, CCing um, uh, Councillor Lewis would be, as the chair, would be appropriate, um, and the mayor signing off on it could do the same. The second thing that is generally a question, uh, if the government is committing to do an assessment, when, in your experience, uh, Mr. Mayor Blood, would we expect to see something coming back um, and to that end, did there be an occasional poke just to <laughs> see how things are going? Through the chair, as far as getting a response and completion of additional work, I don't know when that's going to be done. I have been in contact with Mr. Bashir with Alberta Transportation. Uh, we've been playing telephone tag, but I have been following up and my intent is to find a schedule and provide a poke as you suggested every so often to keep this project moving. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Just a comment, one of the reasons why we're engaging uh, Alberta Transportation is that Glen Park Road is actually in county jurisdiction and the other two roads that it intersects where there are some issues are actually belong to um, Alberta government. So we could not, even if we wanted to, put in traffic control changes to those intersections without any support uh, from or without Alberta Transportation's permission and or help to pay for it. Uh, Glen Park Road has become a busier uh, commuter road in the last five to seven years. And so certainly we see this. And interestingly, last week, there was another collision at the corner of 795 and uh, Glen Park Road. So yeah, much in the need. Um, just one outstanding piece. Um, and I'm actually going to refer to our, our um, county manager, uh, Councillor Smith had requested that perhaps we have the letter go back from the chair of public works committee. What is general practice uh, for letters back and forth to the province? Thank you. Uh, Madam chair. I mean, it was appropriate when it, this was at committee. Uh, now that it's been elevated to council, uh, best practice would be that the letter go to the mayor from the mayor uh, with the CC, obviously to uh, the committee chair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Councillor Smith, does that help? inform the process again it's good advice but I, I i was just looking for the interests of uh of our chair and i and again i just want to make a comment we i think we've really started the ball rolling on this one i could see it happening within the next three to four years uh, when we met with minister wilson and new sarepta very interested in the stats and the danger and the safety and for this letter to come to the minister um, one of the issues we have are provincial roads maintenance care um and and building so i see an outcome here where these are dramatically needed and i could see it happening so uh, again if the mayor wants to take because it is elevated now to a council and the mayor wants to take the lead on this and bring bring this to uh to a completion i'm okay with that yeah and the mayor doesn't really um aside from wanting to follow policy and if, or process and if process is that is a council issue now then it should come from the chair of the mayor than it should councilor vandenberg uh, just further to uh, CEO's uh, thoughts on it. Yes, uh, the continuity part of um, CCing the chair, uh, I think is important and an easy thing to address. Um, so I, I think the continuity part is, uh, uh, should be reflected. So Councillor Vandenberg, do you want to make a motion that we do provide this letter back to the minister and thanks? Because we don't have a motion on the floor right now. I would be happy to make that motion. Uh, uh, inserting our conversation uh, that our 
chair be um, reflected in the CC of the letter? Councilor Lewis. Thank you. I guess my question would be, this came to me as chair of public works. It was brought to the last public works meeting. I'm questioning why it's sitting in front of council today because I was not at the last meeting. Thank you. Oh, I. Um, can you our it was a decision of public works committee to elevate this to council for our response. If I may, Councillor uh, Lewis, it was believed by the committee that this was important enough that it needed to be addressed in, in a public meeting like this. Even though Public Works is a public meeting, we know that we live stream this so that our residents are aware that we are concerned about the safety and ensuring it goes forward. Good question. For sure, if I could follow up. Yep. I would be fine uh, for your signature to be on it and to come from your your uh, the office of the mayor as as for a continuity to have my name CC'd on the bottom as chair of public works, but I would feel would be appropriate. Yep. And I believe Councillor Bannenberg, the motion has just been put up on the screen. If it is, if there's um, the addition, the added piece. With a copy to the chair of public works. Uh, that looks, uh, uh, yes, that, that will do. Okay. Motions on the floor, including the CC to the chair of public works. Any other comments? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Merglod. On to 5A1, which is um, motor grader purchases. Mr. Broadbent, come yep. forward, please, and start your presentation whenever you're ready. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. I uh, apologize for being late. Um, <clears throat> today before you uh, is a report uh, requesting Council uh, consider an $80,000 uh, to be used uh, from the Capital Asset Lifecycle Management, Machinery and Equipment Management Reserve, or from Internal Savings to fund the increase in price for the purchase of two motor graders. Um, and those are uh, capital projects uh, 2022 CP005 and 2022 CP006. Um, so Ladue County Council approved interim budget uh, November 30th. And within that budget uh, was a replacement of two motor graders in 2022, uh, the capital projects, um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, each motor grader was estimated to cost roughly $480,000 However, actual costs at the time um, is 518,900. It is anticipated that we will get approximately $100,000 for each uh, used motor grader, um, either through sale or trade in. Um, the next section, Madam Mayor and Council, goes through the procurement process that we followed um, since the um, interim budget was approved. Um, and, and I'm open to answer any questions about uh, the Canoe Procurement Group of Canada, um, how they do fall in line um, with the Canadian trade agreements um, and how it is compliant with our um, uh, council policy, count, uh, Leduc County Procurement Policy, CM05. Um, so the request today um, is that council consider um, funding the increase in costs for the purchase of two motor graders. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess we're in the world of inflation now and uh, that's what it is. Um, so they, the base amount has already been approved in budget. Is that correct? Yes. And this budget. is just the additional. Yep. Comments or questions, guys? Councillor uh, Scobie, microphone, please. Yes. Uh, by actually reading this, the if you put in the order now, we'd get the graders probably in October or something. Yes. If we don't put it in, we probably won't get them this year. No. Uh, by putting in your request for them now, does that lock the price in? Or yes. uh, that locks in today's, if, today's you, if you put it in today, it's today's price. Yes. It stays with it. So, okay. so in fact, there's two, two motor graders that are in waiting for a response from Leduc County. Um, and that pricing is, was secured three weeks ago. Because okay. pricing is, as, as suggested, it is going up. Okay, it's just, uh, I guess the reason I was asking that uh, uh, report from the CIBC guys yesterday, they're talking about our dollar going down and uh, mm. which is going to, you know, change some of this. So, right. uh, you know, that could mean a $20,000 change if the dollar drops enough. So yeah. if it's locked in at today's price, well, then I think we're, we're we should be solid there. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I have a question and uh, for you, Mr. Broadbent, or for Mr. Coleman. 
There is a machinery and equipment management reserve or internal savings. Does county council have to determine now which, which um, funding uh, stream or will that be up to administration, Mr. Coleman? Or Mr. Weber? Yeah, Madam Chair, we word the recommendation that way because uh, should we see savings, we don't have to make the reserve Correct. transfer at okay. the end of the year. So, so savings is our first line and we might yep. need to take less out of. Yeah, and, and the motion is that way so that it does give us expenditure authority through the reserve piece okay. if required. Thank you, <clears throat> microphone, Mr. Uh, Councillor Smith. I'd be prepared to move the recommendation that Ladue County authorize up to eighty thousand dollars to be used from the capital asset lifestyle management or life cycle lifestyle management, uh, machinery and equipment management reserve or internal savings to fund the increase. I think we're all noticing, and as we open our bills at home, dramatic increases in everything. So again, the, the mayor had said this is something that. We may well see at this table in a variety of different asks. Um, so I will move the recommendation. If I may do a question, I see we use canoe uh, to, uh, is that the first year we've used it? And is this the first year we've seen cost escalations with using the new cost saving procedure? Mr. Broadband. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and, and to the question. Um, so Canoe, formerly RMA, um, which I understand, um, you know, they, they, they are doing a very good job at, at getting pricing on many, many, many programs. Um, the confidence and, and the opportunity here was the time um, that we saved, um, and the price was essentially the same, whether we would have went out directly to tender, um, working with the two suppliers um, that are participating in the canoe program, that being, and I have it in the report, that being Fitting Caterpillar or Brandt John Deere. So the pricing would have been the same. Um, what we did experience is the opportunity of a lot of uh, time saving um, without having to go out um, through our regular procurement process. Okay, thank you for that. Councillor Vandenberg. I know the world is at where it's the hyperinflation and we are in with what we are. This is an $80,000 increase uh, above and beyond what our administration, who does a thorough job, um, has investigated. Um, I have to take pause on that, that $80,000 and um, I'm, not, I'm not comfortable with, with uh, just the, that's just the way things are. The price of the dollar is going down. That's what the cost of inflation is going to be. I think there's a fundamental question here. And uh, I would like to have us uh, during our public work session revisit uh, our contractor uh, motor grader uh, type mm -hmm. uh, providers versus our county uh, municipally supplied uh, providers, because we're going to be approached again to replace some assets. But I want to be comfortable knowing that how whatever route that we do, whatever method that we employ, we have looked at both sides of, of the equation uh, again. And um, then I'm a lot more comfortable in supporting these type of things because I think there's going to be more coming ahead. And uh, I want to be able to be able to tell my taxpayers that, uh, yes, we have looked at both sides of it and uh, report to them what, what our administration is finding. Okay. Thank you. And certainly we can, I see our uh, county manager made a note, we can revisit that. And so did our chair of public works in public works. Um, I'll, I will be supporting the motion today. Um, it is uh, as... Councillor Scobie said, uh, locking it in at a price that will probably be escalating before October and uh, is important for the management of our roads. Our roads are one of our bigger, biggest assets and something that each one of our um, residents probably uses on a daily basis. Any further comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Councillor Vandenberg. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Broadbent. And thank you for the hard work on the roads in a very difficult January when it isn't raining. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> to you and your staff, when it isn't raining, it's snowing and blowing, and then it starts to rain again. So uh, they looked good. I drove them all the way into Leduc today because the highway was icy. So I had an option. On to 130. We're into 5C1 bylaw first reading QE2 business park local area structure plan. And Dave will do the lead on that. So whenever you're ready. Go ahead. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> the Duke County is in receipt of a comprehensive proposal to amend the QE2 business park local area structure plan. Uh, submission was uh, proposed or the proposed amendment was submitted by Select Engineering on behalf of the landowners Pioneer Skies Incorporated. So the amendment application to the QE2 business park local area structure plan proposes to add 80 acres to the east side of the Spine Road, right adjacent to the existing QE2 uh, local area structure plan. So uh, this map outlines the existing QE2 local area structure plan. So those are the lands within the QE2 now. Uh, the QE2 uh, was adopted in 2012 and it was adopted to provide a framework for industrial uh, development within NISQ. Um, the majority of the lands within the QE2 have either been subdivided or developed upon, they're all in private ownership and the lands have been fully redistricted. Um, so since that time, the NISQ major uh, employment center area structure plan was adopted in 2021. So these lands, uh, that comprise the amendment are located in what's identified as the NISQ North area of the NISQ MEC plan, which stipulates it shall be anchored by warehousing and logistics and agribusiness development with secondary developments such as uh, commercial retail and hospitality encouraged along uh, major highways and major arterial roads such as the NISQ Spine Road. So this is the proposed expansion area there. Um, this is what would comprise the amendment area. So the amendment really just... Um, comprises of an expansion of the existing QE2 boundaries to the east side of the Spine Road. This is an excerpt from the uh, amendment document there. So the lands within the existing QE2 will be identified as phase one with the amendment or expansion area being identified as phase two. The amendment area uh, proposes the only departure really from the QE2 local area structure plan is a lower intensity of use. So it will be more for light industrial, business industrial, uh, compatible uses that do not have impacts beyond the site. Uh, the intent of this amendment is due to the proposed expansion area being directly adjacent to existing development, and it provides for a logical extension of services. So all the servicing that will go into phase two are existing, the capacity is existing now, currently in phase one. So it lends itself very well to that extension of this um, local area structure plan. So as you can see there, I've outlined some of the major themes of the NISCU major employment center area structure plan and how they may impact uh, the phase two, which is for the expansion of warehousing and logistics. The land use will allow for the business park and light industrial uses in accordance with the land use policies of NISCU North. Uh, transportation and services will extend through 35th Avenue uh, and improvements along Range Road 244 will provide access to the expansion area and the existing sewer and water services will be extended east across the spine road. Um, I should make a note. So we had made a further inquiry since the writing of this report in regards to the regional evaluation framework uh, and the referral. So we have been confirmed that this is considered a subordinate plan to a higher or higher area plan, which is the NISCU MEC. And because the NISCU MEC would not require an amendment due to this amendment, therefore it does not require a okay. referral. Oh, so that's been confirmed from us, which is nice. Um, so it is the intent, intent rather of the proponent that should the amendment um, or um, be given first reading rather, they would proceed to a, a scheduling of a public hearing potentially on February 25th. And should the amendment in the end be adopted, the proponent would then move on to the appropriate redistricting to redistrict their land from the existing agricultural district to some level of business park or light industrial use, followed by subdivision. So it's for these reasons that uh, Leduc County Administration is recommending that Leduc County Council give the QE2 business park local area structure plan amendment first reading and direct administration and proceed with scheduling the statutory public hearing. Okay, thank you for that report. Comments or questions for administration? Councillor Lewis? Uh, thank you. Uh, Dave, can you put it back to a couple of slides where you showed the, the aerial photo? Uh, so your, your blue square on your, on your next screen kind of showed where that current farm is in that vicinity. Can you tell me what happens with that farm? on that parcel if this area structure plan change goes through? 
Certainly, Madam Chair. So um, there has been a relocation of some of the existing uh, buildings there because they had historical importance. So uh, what you what you what were they were able to utilize of the existing buildings they've had, what they've been able to preserve preserve historically, they have. And on the diagram there, um, I believe the blue square also represents where the future location of a stormwater pond is, but there's more design to come. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? Councillor Vandenberg. Comments to Councillor Lewis. Um, yeah, the developers uh, actually went out of their way uh, to try to preserve the uh, culture and historical significance of that farmstead uh, by relocating uh, most of the structures to their to a, an alternate home and, you, and using all sorts of uh, recycling techniques for stuff left around that most developers don't do. And in fact, as a result of going through that extra uh, work, um, have saved themselves money um, with typically the knockdown and the disposal of those type of things by relocating them. So it's a, a very interesting way of approaching a, de a development. Thank you for that, Councillor Vandenberg. Um, and again, we started uh, with a really good news story with our fire. I think this is a great news story. Uh, this, the faster we can get out in front of uh, redevelopments and have our land shovel ready, as they say, for development, the more attractive Leduc County is for uh, any kind of development. And I think that that's what we want to be doing. This is a great uh, opportunity to do that. Look forward to um, the public hearing and going forward. Um, it is, we're doing the work we need to be doing to ensure that our business park keeps thriving. So. With that, I will actually make the recommendation uh, that we, uh, I guess it's first reading, that we give the QE2 Business Park Local Area Structure Plan Amendment first reading and a direct administration to proceed with the scheduling of a statutory public hearing. So this is a bylaw, this is first reading. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? That is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, I think we're on to Mr. Gallant. And this is 5C2 Broadband Strategy Recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Gallant, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, if you will recall, in mid-December, we brought uh, the broadband strategy and what we heard report to council for acceptance at that time and um, we are bringing it back in front of council today to accept the report and to recommend that council strike a committee to um, pursue further opportunities to develop broadband within the Niski Business Park. Thank you, questions for Mr. Gallant? Looking, I'm looking, Councillor Vandenberg. <laughs> broadband is my passion, I'm sorry. I'm looking anywhere else. Um, my question would be around the committee, uh, striking of the committee. Would that include um, inviting a, a, a councillor of interest to uh, sit on that committee as well? I, I don't believe the uh, uh, strategy around who's going to sit on the committee has been uh, developed yet, but it could certainly be considered. I, I also have a question on the committee. Would that be internal or external? Uh, Mr. Bain. Yeah, Madam Chair, the purpose for this approach would be to assemble a team of administration for the purpose of bringing forward recommendations to council. So that's, that would be the focus of this. And then of course, any, any decisions taken in with respect to those options uh, would be council decisions, but that's what the intent would be here. Okay, so we're looking at an internal team <clears throat> to review the report and even more detail to bring uh, actionable items to council for next steps. Is that correct? Okay, Councillor Smith, microphone please. Uh, um, something less than that, I would suggest, Madam Chair. Um, so, I mean, I think the first thing we need to do is assemble the team. And the reason we want to take this approach is because this actually reaches across departments yes. in the organization, of course. So it's not just a P and D initiative. There are other interests that need to be brought into this. There's a if there's an implementation to undertake here, there's that's kind of physical work on the ground. So that extends well beyond what we can deal with um, as a department. So 
you know, I, I, I don't think we're in a position to commit to a timeline at this point. I think assembling the team, it happens right away. And then there will likely be an initial discussion uh, amongst the members of that team to talk about options and that can flow back to council. I think that work is pretty short term. But the implementation of options that might be selected by council is longer term work, I would say. Absolutely, because implementation comes usually with budget implications as well. Um, would it be possible then, uh, Mr. Main, after the committee is struck that council even just receive an, an email so that we're aware that it's been struck and you guys have started to work? And um, so that we're aware Absolutely. of that. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, Councillor Vandenberg. And I am supportive of that. And I know the work that's been gone into it. Um, it has been a little bit of time coming, but I will point out that there are some low, low lying fruit light net right now uh, when it comes to broadband, particularly in our urban area that is NISCU. And uh, economic development would say that we need to be competitive. And so there's a little bit of an urgency here um, that we must remain competitive to the other areas that we're competing against. And we have been talking about broadband for going on four years now. And so if I could convey that, uh, to this group, to the new committee being formed. Um, I, as one, will be the one that'll be asking questions all the time about how, how, how fast we're progressing. He will come out of his shell and start asking questions. Um, Councillor Vandenberg, you are passionate about this. You have been uh, very much uh, a leader in this. Would you like to make the two recommendations in the report? I would be privileged to do so. All right, so the first recommendation, can we take them together, Mr. Coleman? Yes, Madam Chair, one more. So the first report. recommendation is to accept the strategy as presented in December 14th, and the second is to establish the team um, to provide to investigate implementation options for the provision of improved broadband service throughout NISCU and to present these options to council for consideration. Any further questions? All in favor? That is unanimous. Good luck. Thank you, Madam Chair. On to, oh, Ms. Weiss is here. Thank you, Mr. Glant. Oh, sorry. Oh, did I miss one? I'm sorry, you're right. There is one from Councillor Smith. I saw it on my agenda. Councillor Smith, I no, have no I, uh, report, so I'm- Yeah, there was no report again. I've had a chance. Uh, today I'm looking to task admin to follow through. So there was no report. I'm looking to have a discussion in a later time. I've been approached by a lot of people in New Sarepta to open up kind of a gig economy businesses. They'd like to do it legally. So they're looking at land use bylaw changes, which cost upwards of $1,000. So I have somebody, one example, somebody wanted to open up a yoga studio in their basement. And this person provided yoga to Leduc County through Recreation and Dean, and they did it at the high school, but the high school threw them out of the hallway. So now this person... Rec used to have that person do the work for us. That person wants to open up. I've had somebody that wanted to make cakes. And Ray had an, uh, a story of somebody in Thorsby that wanted to make cakes, but the cost of, you'd never recover the money. So what I'm wondering is, uh, again, talking, I talked to Planning and Development and Dwayne, would council be receptive to bringing something forward from admin to have a discussion in New Sarepta to allow home businesses, um, such as yoga studios, such as cake makers, um, to locate, because right now that's not a, a usage that, uh, that's allowed. You have to change the land use bylaw to allow some of these gig things into it. And I think Grant will speak to some clarification in planning lingo as I'm not the best in that. That would be great because I know we do have a, la we do have a home based business bylaw that allows people to have businesses in their homes. I, unless it's just everywhere except New Sarepta, Mr. Bain. <laughs> No, it's certainly, Madam Chair, those opportunities do exist. Um, I think what has emerged through some discussions with uh, Councillor Smith recently is there are some what could be regarded as legitimate business startup opportunities in New Sarepta in particular um, that aren't able to benefit from the limited um, opportunities provided through the current provisions in the bylaw. So okay. I would suggest that it would be appropriate if council agrees that that uh, administration could go away and look at some options to just increase flexibility in some of those provisions, particularly with respect to the Hamlet. And these are things we've done before. We've been constantly trying to tweak the regulations and the policy around, you know, these kinds of business opportunities for new Sarepta over time. It's, it's kind yes. of an ongoing effort. So this would be part of that work. So it would be specific to new Sarepta then in this situation or all Hamlets? I guess, so. Madam I Chair, our observation would be these are these are situations and opportunities that are peculiar to New Sarepta. Okay, thank you, Councillor Vandenberg. 
that was my line of questioning or my question was, uh, well, I have no issue whatsoever with this, uh, um, uh, with this uh, idea, uh, do we preclude it only to new Sarepta? Can it in fact um, uh, plug, plug into uh, our other uh, hamlets that we've identified as, as just recently as being growth hamlets um, so that we don't have to come back and do this again, but it does open up the opportunity for potentially other areas. Uh, Madam Chair, that's certainly council's option and that wouldn't be unreasonable at all. I, I think the one of the reasons we would suggest a particular focus on New Sarepta is there's an existing policy framework. There's an area structure plan for New Sarepta, um, which is unique to that particular geographic area. And, and we would regard this review mini review, if you will, as being one of the steps to implement that policy framework. Okay. So we, we could sort of in tandem with that work, look at up, look at similar opportunities for the other hamlets. That would be appropriate if that's council's wish. Okay. Thanks. But again, this is a really try to solve the problem that's currently existing in New Sarepta, which is identified as our growth hamlet. Councillor Smith. I do have um, a motion I'd like to bring forward today. And before I do that again, part of the background is I am so happy when people want to get legal and want to do development within the land use bylaw and also get a development permit. And those people are who we're trying to cater to here because we know in New Sarepta, we do have enforcement that has to work with several people that will not uh, live within the land use bylaw, will not get a permit and they take up quite a bit of time of enforcement and grant. So when somebody comes forward and asks how they can be legal, how they can have a reputable business, how they're really important to our economy. And I, and I got to go back to raise where would you spend thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars to change a land use bylaw and then another couple hundred bucks to do a development permit to sell cakes at a profit? It would take you 30 years to get through. But do we want cake decorators? Do we want people doing nails? Do we want dog grooming? Do we want all of these businesses in a community that is really short? So if I could, Mayor, just read into the record the, um, the motion that council direct administration. There's one on there. Oh, she's fast. Uh, okay. Did you, did you provide? And that I see piece? that yeah. I see that reading minds is working awesome for us. So that's exactly what I was thinking. Thank you. Okay, and it seems like a reasonable request. It sounds like planning and development understand the issue, and, and it is something that can be addressed. So, any further questions, Councillor Lewis? I would ask Councillor Lewis or Councillor Smith to please read it in for those viewers. Uh, could you please read the whole read uh, motion for those of us or those who may not have an The option. one right there, the Duke County Council directs the men to consider options for increasing the flexibility in the home pace business provisions in the land use bylaw that applies to new Sarepta with a focus to unlocking potential startup business opportunities in the hamlet. Uh, appropriately considering the need to balance the benefits of new business investment with any potential offsite impacts and to report back to council with options for amending the land use bylaw. Thank you, Thank Councillor you. Um, Vandenberg. Councillor Smith, would you uh, entertain a friendly amendment? And that would be third line uh, startup businesses. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, oh, second line, pardon me. Uh, Home-based business provisions in the land use bylaw to apply to Hamlet's in particular, New Sarepta with a focus, da, 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 da. So it does not preclude other hamlets, uh, but it does keep the focus on New Sarepta. Again, I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, if there's an opportunity in Rollyview to do a, a gig economy or something, why wouldn't we do that? If there's something in Kavanaugh, there's something in, uh, in the other hamlets we have, definitely we want to be legal. But again, there is a specific focus, and this is something that has come back over eight years to New Sarepta, where we try to get people legal, Yep. We have businesses mislocated beside houses and houses beside other ones. But again, we're just trying to recoup some of our investments by allowing businesses uh, to come in and people that want to get legal. I'll do that. So I'm OK with adding other hamlets to that if council is all right with that. Yeah, okay. thank you. Thank you. All right. Very interesting. Councillor Lewis, myself and the county manager had a meeting earlier today about narrowing the, the rules around home-based businesses. So uh, it's, a, it's a great job because you get to see both sides of the spectrum and how it affects people uh, and their lives. But certainly I do support this uh, motion going forward. I'm gonna call the question, all in favor? That is unanimous, thank you. On to Ms. Weiss. 
who has been waiting patiently. Whenever you're ready, ma'am. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and Council. I am here today with a recommendation that the County Council deny the request to cancel tax penalties. Boy, that sounded better in my head. Um, so that's the recommendation on the floor. We did receive a letter from the ratepayer on January of January 10th, requesting that the November tax penalties be canceled. Uh, the two accounts, one has $1,227.20 of penalties, and the second one is $385.58. There have been no, no payments made to date as of the writing of this report. And so my recommendation is based on adhering to the penalties of current on current and arrears of property tax bylaw 0121. And as such, I would recommend that we deny the request to cancel the penalties on these two rules. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, just a clarifying question. They are currently doing tax payments monthly. So the previous owner was this as of the last time I looked, they were not enrolled yet. So they, they have, they own a business. I assume they understand there's a tax implication to that, but they haven't either paid their taxes nor signed up for tax payments. That's correct. All right. Thank you. I have Councillor Lewis and then Councillor Smith. Thank you. Uh, it looks according to the letter that they purchased the property on July 1st, 2021. Uh, they didn't get a reminder letter. Uh, on September 25th, they would have had to set up taxes in between that September 25th and July 1st timing. Is that correct? With land titles being behind, I'm not sure where they were at. Um, typically, the lawyer handles the property tax side of things. I'm not familiar with why the lawyer wouldn't have in this particular case. Okay, thank you. Councillor Smith? <laughs> I'm in agreement. If any of you have bought property, the lawyers generally deal with taxes as part of the one important thing. So if there was any taxes outstanding for the year that the person that bought the land would be notified that there would still be half a year's taxes and generally they would get them to pay it or understand they're there. So unless they didn't use a lawyer and we've had this before. So to me, there's a process in purchasing a home and there's due diligence and lawyers close a deal and the lawyer has to follow through and do that. So I'll be moving the recommendation that we deny the request to cancel tax penalties um, respectively with the two amounts today, just due to the fact that I believe the lawyer and the due diligence of the owner uh, is responsible, not the county. Thank you. Um, confusing third paragraph saying payment for all arrears will be issued this week in January, and yet they're asking for the penalties to not be charged. Yeah, so uh, when I wrote this recommendation, there had not been a payment received okay. or a tips uh, tax installment payment plan application received either. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? Councillor Smith has put a motion on the floor to deny uh, the request. All in favor, that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Weiss. Thank you. And we will be going in camera. So I need someone to make a motion to go in camera. Councillor Scobie, all in favor. Okay, and we will wait until we have moved in camera and get the wave from administration. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for the first half of our meeting. It wasn't very sincere. <laughs> okay. Are we done? So a reminder to council that we do have the information for this in the in-camera package that was provided to council last week. You've missed nothing. Good. Mm. Who gets to sit by Rick? Okay. Anybody else? The mother of four. Every time that meeting 
and ask them to phone in. <laughs> Thank you very much. We are coming uh, out of camera. Thank you for Councillor Belazer making motion to come out of camera. That was unanimous. We have no business coming out of our in-camera session. So we will be looking for someone to adjourn. Councillor Lewis at 219. Thank you very much for joining us virtually. And uh, for those of you heading to the Alberta Egg, so the Egg Service Board conference this afternoon, drive safely. I will see you all there tomorrow. We're adjourned. You went tonight, right? Somebody here thought it was in the West End. I did. The West End. That's what it sounds like. The West End. Could you imagine him driving all over the West End? <laughs>